Welcome to A Better You Podcast. Let's start today to develop a better you. This podcast takes on life's challenges and obstacles, such as overcoming addictions, behaviors, midlife career changes, to keeping your family together. The show that gives you take-home assignments to overcome obstacles of the week. Receive godly wisdom for a more fulfilling and purpose-driven life with Anthony McFarland. Let's get started with crafting a better you. All right, welcome to a better you podcast, and this is the after show, and uh, we are fortunate to have a live audience here uh, with us in the studio. Come on, y'all, clap it up for yourselves for joining us, listeners from around the world, listening and watching to a better you podcast. And of course, this is the Anthony McFarland channel. And my special guest today, um, I have two athletes with me as a junior at Pasadena High. This gentleman threw for 2,697 yards and 26 touchdowns with five interceptions. He also ran for 562 yards and eight scores. He was a three-star recruit. Uh, those uh, which we got offers from Arizona, I've done my homework. Maryland, uh, Ohio, uh, I mean Iowa State, and Utah, which he would play quarterback for. He was considered a dual threat. I said, watch out now. Uh, help me welcome to this uh, broadcast Mr. Brandon Cox, the creator and partner of Jude Movement. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a blessing to have you here. It's a oh, blessing. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a blessing to be here. Amen. And my next defensive back uh, helped lead Mount uh, San uh, Mount San Antonio to a 2009 Junior College National Championship. He collected uh, 52 tackles, uh, three tackles uh, for loss, a team high six interceptions, and 14 pass breakups in leading team to a 13-1 record in 2009. As a freshman, he tailed 26 tackles and intercepted and interceptions and five. Uh, uh, past breakups, played in 2013 to 2017 during his career with the Utah Blaze, uh, Orlando uh, Predators, Portland Steel, and Cleveland uh, Gladiators. One of his greatest accomplishments, of course, was playing for Tennessee uh, uh, University. And uh, in his uh, professional, uh, uh, on his professional journey, uh, he intercepted four passes uh, for uh, 66 yards in his career from college ball to AFL starter. Welcome, Mr. Arnez Eichner in the house. All right. Wow. Guys, it's a blessing to have you guys on the, on the show with me. And this is the after show from us actually talking about knowing you're cool. Uh, but I wanted to do a special segment today. Uh, because what we experienced uh, this week uh, has been tragic. Uh, gentlemen, as, as fathers and athletes, what was your first response to this tragic news about Kobe? Um, man, um First, I just want to say it's a blessing to be on this podcast for sure. And, you know, we're both being PHS alumni, mm -hmm. uh, coming from the same high school. Oh, come you on, know, man. Me okay. being a, a younger generational cat. That, yeah, me being a younger I generational didn't, cat. You probably played for Muir or something. Nah, I don't know. Dog okay. <laughs> all day, all day long. <laughs> all right. Um, we okay. kind of we kind of could have the same upbringing a little bit, and we've both been through a lot of trials and tribulations. So, um, you know, both being – born and raised in Los Angeles, you know, um, that was my generation. You know, when, yes. you, when you, when I grew up, we did not have a professional football team. There's no major baseball icon that came out of Los Angeles. So when you think of Los Angeles, you think sports, the first thing that comes to your mind is, is Los Angeles Lakers. Right. 
the second thing that comes to your mind or the other first thing that comes to your mind is Kobe Bryant. Yes, for you, especially um, for your generation. Especially for my yes, generation. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So for, for my generation, it was it was Kobe Bryant. Um, so hearing a tragic loss of an icon, you know, that embodied what it meant to be a finisher, embodied mm. what it meant to be a, a resilient competitor, to, to always do whatever it takes to, to win. To win. Um, as an athlete, you can only, you know, praise that and, and, and give him the utmost respect because at the end of the day, the only thing we care about is that W at the end of the day. Right. So, you know, having a, a an icon that, that's, you know, playing in the city that you live in. Yes. Um, that is so resilient and, and understands how to overcome adversity. And pretty much in his game, he's teaching you life lessons. He's teaching you that right. no matter what you're going through in life, suck it up. Yeah. Dig deep. Yeah. Find your inner why. Yeah. And go chase the W. Yeah. Don't hesitate to put the team on your back. So as a as a quarterback, um, as a leader of an organization, as a leader of a football team, it was always a hats off mentality for me, and it was a person. You played basketball too, right? I did play yeah. basketball growing mm -hmm. up. So just being an athlete in general, it really doesn't matter the sport. It's it's right. it all correlates. Yes. Kinda, you know. So um, that mentality is just is just something that we that, all that mambo mentality it, it's something that we all gravitated to yes. it was something that we all kind of had to put inside ourselves to to be fearsome on the field so yeah. um that that's, that's definitely my take on it Arnett? I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie this this one hurt to the point because it felt like we grew up with him like mm -hmm. from the time he came and we saw him mature all the way to the time of his retirement so it was just something powerful how you see this 17 year old kid basically airball straight out of house high, high school straight right out of high school just airballing you know clutch games to now taking over and being hated because of those moments where mm -hmm. you knew he was going to come through mm -hmm. like people are really like man if kobe touched the ball it's literally this game is over. It's over. <laughs> and, and that that is that's one thing about it. It was just the, the fire in him. Yeah. And fire. it's nothing it's nothing you could do, say, it would not matter. And it was things in his life that was going on that he overcame while regardless of all the stuff going on, all the noise, he still overcame, he was still performing yes. at a high level. Yes. That that's so hard to yes. do, especially when Things are trying to take your mind away from the game for something that you love. Like, sure. It's so much things you can get, you know, something not right on with your routine. Everything can mess up. Mm -hmm. This Just one little thing. One little know. thing. Oh, and this this guy, he had to go to court and then come to a game. Just the pressure of that alone and still perform. Yes. And during that whole, that whole case, that whole case, he performed at the highest level. Mm -hmm. At the highest level consistently. Mm -hmm. And... When, when I thought about it, when I thought about it, and you mentioned it, um, when I heard about it, I said, no, nah, this, can't, this can't be true at all. Yeah, everybody it thought it was a hoax. It, it can't yeah. be true. And then um, instantly, uh, Miles Monroe came to mind because yeah. all I can think about is he died empty. It was, he didn't leave nothing. He didn't leave anything. I, I thought about his last game. I saw the replay. He left that court dead tired. Six. It was, it was no yeah. regret. It was just the way he yeah. wanted, and he said he felt no remorse. He had nothing else to give to the game, and that's all you can do as an athlete. Yeah, that that's that's that I, that's powerful. On our podcast today, and you you all were with me here in the studio. We talked about how people knowing who they are is so important, mm -hmm. and I believe that Kobe. Um, was the poster champion guy for the example of someone who knew who he was. Uh, and, and here's what I want people to understand about knowing your who. Mm -hmm. As much as basketball, hear me guys, and I know where the two of you are, and we're gonna get into that, like what you guys are doing. But as much as basketball was a, 
uh, uh, was a part of Kobe's life. It was, it was a great part of him, right? It was not his who. It was not his who. His who was not defined by his title or being the Mamba, one of the, the, the greatest prolific athletes to play the game of basketball. His who was bigger than basketball. Mm -hmm. And you just said it. You said, and, and everybody's been saying it. When he walked away from basketball, he walked away with no regrets. And when you said he walked away empty, he walked away empty of that part of him. The tragedy is, is that there was so much more to him, so much more to come. And, and we got a glimpse of that with his new production, uh, him winning the Oscar, uh, I believe it was the Oscar. Am I right? Yeah, it was the Oscar that he won. And so he was just beginning to start to create. I heard one of his closest friends um, uh, earlier say that he was starting to uh, uh, recreate himself. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was on that path. Mm -hmm. And so there was literally so much more to um, who he was that we didn't get a chance to experience. And so uh, we got robbed from that. And I think bigger than that, uh, his wife, his daughters got robbed, you know, by this tragic accident. Do you think that it's really resonated with people across the world yet of the gift that Kobe was? Um, I would say, unfortunately, because of his passing, people are starting to recollect exactly what he meant. Um, I think there right. are so many life lessons that we've learned through the trials and tribulations that he dealt with on the court um, that made us understand that this, this man embodied resilience. Yes. You know, the things that he went through to continuously play the game, to continuously chase the overall version of himself right. on the basketball yeah. court. On that on that level, on that 10. Man, like yeah. after games, he used to sit in the gym and, and put up over a thousand shots after basketball games. Wow. I didn't know whether, that. Whether, it, wow. whether it was a win or whether it was a loss, mm -hmm. he's still yeah, in the gym. Shaq used to do like 500 every night. He's, he's putting up thousands of shots. And anybody that, that's played a sport understands how, how tough repetition is on your body. Yeah. Right. Shooting a basketball, you know, over a thousand times, it, you're going to be right. tired. Right. It's, it's not easy. Right. Um, so just for him to have that mindset to always chase the overall version of himself in that specific area of his life, mm -hmm. um, I think people are starting to catch on to it. Just like unfortunately the passing of nipsey hustle people started to realize exactly what he was after, doing you know? after the fact yeah um yeah it's interesting you say that because uh, my daughter went on amazon to buy a uh, kobe bryant uh jersey mm -hmm. and she had it in the car card it was i think she said it was i want to say it was either 58 or 68 and so when she went, she pushed the button to go check out. It, 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 it blinked and she said, what is this? So she went back to the page and when she clicked it again, the price, is skyrocketed. The price skyrocketed to 200 something dollars, this, this yeah. jersey that she was, she was ordering. And so they changed it in the system yeah. that fast. Mm. So before he think about this, before his death, mm -hmm. that jersey was you could find it on sale or a good deal on that specific jersey for sixty-eight dollars mm -hmm. or hundred and twenty-five dollars. And immediately within hours, 
within hours, and I, and I don't mean eight hours, mm -hmm. it quadrupled. Exactly. Which is kind of crazy. It's, it's beyond. Yeah. Now we know that his wife and children will ah, be affected by this, this tragic accident for the, literally for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, 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 and we need to pray for them. We, we really do. And, and um, keep even a declaration of, of faith over his, his, his family as well as all the families. Not just the Bryant family, but all the families. I mean, you're talking about a whole family was on that yeah. aircraft, yeah. leaving one child behind. Mm -hmm. I mean, who can even fathom that? And it's, you, can't even, you can't even speak to that. Um, but we pray that there, there would be a peace that encompasses them, uh, uh, that, that God would comfort them in a very special way and, and place all the right people in their lives right now. And, and of course, in, in time to come, I want to talk with you both about the role his father played in his life and how it unfortunately ended on a bad note. Mm -hmm. In that his parents, him and his parents will never ever get to make that right. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll never get to say, you know what, I, I apologize. I apologize. I please forgive me or for whatever the offense was, and 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 and, and put the differences aside. Mm -hmm. And as two athletes who actually had fathers, mothers, parents, just like Kobe, mm -hmm. you both have had parents that have invested in you and supported you through the ups and downs and the injuries and the, the, all of this, all this stuff that you guys go through. What's your thoughts about someone, a parent who played such a critical role in you becoming and developing into the, the men, the athletes that you were, especially his father, mm -hmm. and then you allow one thing like to separate you guys. to separate you yeah. because he doesn't, you know, your parent doesn't like who you want to be with, yeah. you know, yeah. which was him marrying Vanessa, yeah. mm -hmm. and and not sh I'm not focusing on the negative of it, mm -hmm. but the far-reaching effects mm -hmm. of allowing your differences to divide you to the point that you're estranged from one another, and then something happens, and there's no longer the opportunity to make things right. What, what's, your, what's, your, what's your thoughts on that? Go ahead, Nance. Yeah, that, that, that would be devastating just because you really are there because, you know, even God makes, he created us, but you're made in the likeness and image of your parents. So without, Come on. you know, the parent, you wouldn't even be in that situation. You don't even have that side. You don't have your, that, the mannerism, the, the, the foundation of who you are yeah. from your parents. Yeah. So to completely remove that because of, you know, a choice later on down the road just because of some indifferences, that that's yeah, that that's tough. And I already know that was tough for Kobe because mm -hmm. just the type of person he is, he's like, Well I gotta keep moving forward. Like I can't cry about it. You know, I it's it's nothing I can really do as far as hold it over or I can't move forward because that's just not him. But at the end of the day, you know it ate him up. Yeah. And then especially his parents now where oh, they can't say, you know, I'm sorry or forgive me or, you know, I'm sorry, let me have this relationship with your family now. And I, I can only imagine, like, what's going on in their hearts. Like, they're probably just distraught. Yes. And to this point, 
is it, I'm not going to say is it too late, but can you really reach out now? Um, it's, it's definitely tough, in my opinion. Uh, but just speaking from a standpoint to know what it's like to have a, a father that's played the position and the sport that you play. Yeah. And being a, a child that wants to follow in that father's footsteps. Right. Because um, your was, dad played sports. Yeah, my dad, yeah. not only did he play sports. Your dad played you know, uh, baseball, yeah. but he was a professional. He yeah. played sports. He yeah. played quarterback, you know. Right. Um, I, I transferred to a college because of, you know, the steps that he made. He right. went to Hampton University. Right. After I left Utah, I decided to go to Hampton University because – that was I felt like that was something I wanted to do. I wanted to follow in my dad's footsteps because he was always a role model. Yes, he was always a role model in and my If I eyes. recall there was an article, I could I stand to be corrected, that said that both your mom and dad was Hampton uh, alumni. Hampton a uh, Hampton alumni. I said, mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. oh man. So you, you know I was, yeah, full circle. Uh, yeah, my, my Personally speaking, me and my father kind of lived the same life. You know, he went to a major Division One college, transferred, went to Hampton. I went to a major Division One college, transferred, went to Hampton. Um, unfortunately, I just had five surgeries and didn't reach that next level. Um, but it just shows you how much an impact a father has in a, in a child's life. Yes. Um, so knowing that personally and, and knowing, you know, the relationship that Joe Bryant and Kobe Bryant had growing up, I – it was because of Joe Bryant is the reason why Kobe Bryant He's had that, why. that challenge accepted mentality, which created and evolved into the Mamba mentality. Right. He started that. Yes. Um, it was a re he implemented all those key foundational principles within Kobe to get him to the level of where he was. Unfortunately, with key differences, um, it kind of severed the relationship when it came to Kobe becoming his own man. Um, and unfortunately, it didn't go the way it wanted to. Yeah. Um, I, I want to just pause a second, and mm -hmm. I want to get the audience feedback tonight on just one or two thoughts on how important, what well, your thoughts on their relationship being estranged, but more so, uh, why is it important for families to work out their differences? I want to hear your thoughts on that. Um, would you be so kind and take the mic out to the audience and let's uh, get some feedback? Anybody? This is part presumption, but being a parent, um, I have always embraced my children's friendships, relationships, always invited all of the kids over to the house so I could hear what they have to say. Then I knew what kind of club my son was involved in when he played basketball at Muir, um, and then later in college, and was sought um, to the next level. I, I think that as parents, sometimes if we don't care for their choices, that we try to do the power pull. So now it's either them or it's us. Yes, make them and choose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and, and that is a dangerous, uh, volatile place. Um, even if they come over to your way of thinking or, or behavior, it doesn't mean that it changes their thoughts. Um, so I think that it's, as, as parents, I would not want to have my son or daughter close their eyes without knowing that I love them. Yeah. That, that regardless to what their choices are, they're still a part of me. And that my presence in their life, and then seeing that person whom they choose to be with, try to see them through their eyes and then always be praying in the background. Yes for whatever I feel concerned about because I'm talking to a father in heaven who has a love for me and for my children. And so he is going to honor that. And then he's going to possibly change my way of seeing things. Yes, yes. If I allow myself 
to be taught by the greatest father. There it is, right there. Mm -hmm. That's, That's good. That's good. That's good. Anyone else? One of them? Okay. Come on. Do me a favor if you can just kind of come up here so we can get we have we have twenty four camera shot, but right now one of our cameras only one of our cameras are watching working here. So yeah, just stand right there. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think that it's important because one, I one, I know that we're not supposed to do it alone. Step over you know? a little bit this way. Um, you're not supposed to do it alone, and I think that um, I think I know that we're just, we're just not supposed to do it alone, and I think that with open communication and just being able to talk, because when we're younger, we grow into who we want to be. We sometimes we don't really know all the way, so as we grow, we're trying to become the person that we want to be. And that can, be, that can create differences or separate things because we don't agree with the thoughts of the people that are above us, you know? Mm -hmm. But when there is friction here on this planet, you know, it's hard because you go through every day because there's a void that you do want to be filled. You know, you think about that person every day, and I know that it hurts regardless of whatever because there was love for that person once before. So it's kind of like taking a loss. And so I think that to fix that while being able to have an opportunity to do so is important because then you don't have to like find that somewhere else. And so I think that for the opportunity, unfortunately for Kobe and his parents, for that to never be able to be salvaged, you know, that's something that you have to live with for the rest of your life and that can be to at you yeah. in a different way than it will like when you have the opportunity to do it now. But I think that pride, which is not like from the spirit of God, and I think that ego stands in the way of that. And it doesn't allow you to get to the next phase and it doesn't allow you to get to the next level. You know, and so if we're able to forgive as God forgives, then I think that that's when we're doing the right thing versus yes. just holding on to that grudge and just like holding on to that's something good. that's so heavy. That's good. So, yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Come on back up. Oh, awesome. Give it up for yourself. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, as we get, as we prepare to close, I'd like for you both to share with me, share with the audience, uh, one of the greatest obstacles you've ever faced and how you overcame it. Right, one of the greatest obstacles you've ever faced. And what did you do to overcome it? I would, I would say, um, after my rookie year in uh, arena football, coming back my second year, I uh, tore my ACL. And at the time, when I tore my ACL, I was, my daughter was, uh, was just about to be born. So at this time, you know, I was kind of just fighting where like I'm really down and out really at this moment. But at the same time, it was like, okay, let me get in this word and get strong. So I came back from the ACL stronger than ever. <laughs> Every I came back in seven months. That's that's the fastest, um, according to um, the doctors and the rehab uh, people who are doing my rehab. They said this is the fastest I've ever seen anyone do this, and it was nothing but the grace of God. Mm -hmm. um, that following year, though, second game of the season, first play. I broke my collarbone, and wow. I wasn't even mad that I broke it. I was more mad because I just came back from the ACL, and it, just the amount of work that I put in just to get, to get there, back. just to get there, and it wasn't even like I was there yet to, like, to be fully like, okay, Arnest, I feel back. I feel like the, the old Arnest, but that was just devastating, and then from there, it was just like, okay, it's now... Do I still want to play this game? Do do I mm. am I is it not for me now? Right. But then I had people confirming in my family, support, my foundation, talking to me. Yes. At the same time I kept for some reason the word remember kept coming in my head, just popping up. And if you look at the Bible, really, God just wants you to remember what his word says. And so when I start speaking what the word was saying over my life rather Come than on. that situation. <laughs> Then that's when I overcame those obstacles and whatever I was going through. Yes. So it didn't matter what I was going over, up, oh, I mean going through, because I was an overcomer. I already had the victory. Yes. Regardless yeah. whether it's football, whether it's a business, I already knew who I was because God told me beforehand that it was I already had the victory. And 
If he's for me, who can be against me? So that is when I knew anything that I face, any trials, tribulations, I'm an overcomer. It doesn't yes. matter. The word is always, and you got to work the word rather than just know it. You have to work it. That's right. And once I start working it, I realize, I'm like, oh, man, this is easy. Yes. Regardless of if I'm going through something, it's going to fall down. And at the end of the day, I'm going to come out, come out on the other side of the storm much stronger than what I, what I was. Supreme always rise to the top. Always. Come always. on. <laughs> All right. Brandon. Man, you know. Uh, mine kind of attests to, to what Arnez says. Anybody that's kind of broken anything in their body that's dealt with the rehabilitation process <laughs> yes. from a, a a dead muscle or a dead bone in your body and have to build that back up knows how, how man, painful, mm -hmm. tough it is. Painful, just just the whole process. It's 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 very very you know. It takes a lot out of you. So, so when um, Kobe tore his Achilles, Achilles you got and to, then walked and, and didn't go off court, mm -hmm. walked over to the free sh uh, the, the uh, two free throw uh, yeah to the free throw line free throw line he's in excruciating pain to get shoot two shots for the team it's you know anybody knows that's been through a real injury knows that so for me um, my whole college career I knew the type of athlete I, I was um, yes. However, I faced five surgeries in my whole college career. career. Um, torn AC joint and broken clavicle, two foot surgeries, one that sat me out my whole senior year. I didn't play my senior year in high school and was still blessed to have over eight scholarships. Um, and, you know, then my last, I transferred to a new school to give me a fresh start, you know, I'm not injury prone no more and faced two meniscus surgeries. Um, so at that point, you know, my senior year, I have my final meniscus surgery. I don't play. Um, and I really have to sit there and ask myself real life questions. Yeah. Um, Pastor, you, I've, gr I've, grow up, I've grown up in the church. Um, but as I went to college, I'm going to be 100% transparent. Um, there was a time that I guess I, I lost my faith and, and was more so dependent on myself. Um, because of the leader and because of the person I thought I could be that I could do this myself um, and it took to me to be at the lowest point of my life because I was a young man that knew all I, all I knew was football I had a master's degree um, from Hampton University came home was still depressed for six months right. of my life because I didn't know what to do next I didn't know where I was going and that pivotal point in time made me ask myself those questions. Who is Brandon Cox Come without associating mm -hmm. myself with the ball yeah, yeah. or being in between these lines? Um, me asking myself those questions is what brought me back to my faith and made me really understand who God is. Um, and God continuously started revealing himself to me. Yes. Um, and I had a revelation that understanding the reason why I went through those five surgeries yes. was because he was trying to let me know that that wasn't who I was in the first place. Mm -hmm. My, I'm bigger than football. I'm bigger than Come being on. in between those lines. And That's I have right. a testimony to share um, because there's a lot of young lost souls that fall into, you know, their circumstances of all they see. You know, as, as young black males, we see only successful men we usually see are those that carry a ball, that got a mic in their hand, or, or selling drugs. Yes. And that's the only thing that we see and we idolize that. However, there's so many different platforms and so many things that you could really do with life yes. outside of that as young black individuals. Um, and he made me realize that. He sat me down and he made me realize exactly who I am. Um, the thing for me was I just didn't want, I knew I wasn't normal. Even though I'm not playing sports, yes. I still wanted the lifestyle. I still wanted to be uh, looked at as a, as a legacy. I still yes. wanted to leave Influence. a legacy. I yes. still wanted to be an influencer. I still wanted to make an impact yes. on this world. I got to jump in right now. 100%. So as you went before God and you learned your who. Mm-hmm. God gave you something. He gave me my why. 
he gave you your why. 100%. Yes. 100%. As I learned my who, he gave me my why, and it made everything that happened and transpired in my life before that make sense. Yes. It made every trial and tribulation that I went through Mm -hmm. make sense. Yes. Um, You know, the main thing, the main word he gave to me during that time was battle tested. He knew I've been through five surgeries, but he understood that my mentality and who I am as a person, yes. I'm going to never quit. If I call myself a believer, I call yes. myself understand this is what I'm supposed to do. Yes. Football was something I thought I was supposed to do, so it was nobody that could break my spirit. Um, now knowing my why, yes, he understood exactly who I was on the football field and the type of leader I was on. on the football field, which translates to understanding now, you know, Trans, transitioning to the next step in my life, with which is ministry and and speaking yes. my truth and yes. letting kids know exactly who they are. Now, out of that, I have to jump in here. Out of that came the birthing mm-hmm. of a great organization mm-hmm. that that you and some of your guys, collegiate athletes, came together and tell everybody real quick about. That organization um, yeah, so, and how they can find you, and I'm gonna wrap it up with. So our dur- next. during this time, he he sat me down and and gave me. He understood I was a person that lived by principle and foundation. Yes. Um, and he gave me a principle and foundation, which I call the G Code Incorporated. Um, G Code Incorporated is a nonprofit organization. It's all about shifting the narrative within inner cities to get youth to understand what it means to be a G. And the G isn't what everybody thinks it means. It's not that G thing. The G stands for God. The, yes. G, the G code is a, is a code of conduct that, that takes the, the foundational principles of the Bible to a, a simplistic form. To realize to be a G is about taking care of yourself, taking care of your family, taking care of your community, yes. and, and being the overall best version of yourself. So you want to groom a child to become all he can be, guide him to a life of success and fulfillment, and now give him the whereabouts and the accountability and the responsibility for him to galvanize the next generation to do that for well, those to come up after us. So it's, it's a never-ending process of getting these kids to understand life isn't about you. It's about those that are coming up after you, your cousins, your nieces, your yes. nephews, those back. that are responsible. It's your responsibility to set an example, to be a role model. Yes. Um, and that's How can exactly. people get in touch with you? So you can follow us on all social media platforms at gcode.la, gcode.la. Um, and, and you can email us at thegcode.la at gmail.com. Website is www.thegcodeinc.com. Come on. All right. Awesome. 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 All right, Brother Ernest. Yeah, so. I mean, Arnest. <laughs> yeah, you your daddy. That's my dad. That's your dad. <laughs> we twins. We twins. So. <laughs> He's a champion, too. Yeah. That's my guy. Yeah, so where this, it all came back from football, and we talked about it, um, wanted me to get um, involved with the and kids. And I was like, man, the best way, how can I do it? And I was like, well, sports come easy to me. I can mm-hmm. connect right. with, with people and I can way more people than, because people associate with, even though I'm, I haven't been in, out here in Pasadena, a lot of people that associate with me, rather if they know me or not, it's people, they walk by like, you are nice? I, I didn't know you was that small, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> because they just hear, they hear stories. It, it's, it's people who, they just hear stories. Or to see you on TV, yeah. to see you in person. It's two, it, it's two different things. Yeah. So um, I was like, how can I reach people? And my thing was, you know, what come easy to me. I was just like, okay, football comes easy. Like, for some reason, my mom said I was special. Like, not special, like, you know, like something wrong with you. Right. Because she was like, Arnest, you were just so disciplined. You, somebody tell you to go run and you would just do it. And you didn't ask no questions, you would just do it. And I realized that I have a discipline that can be taught to other people. People don't have that. Mm. And at the same time, I can share that same discipline that I saw when I was younger to, in order to get to where I wanted to be. These kids don't have that discipline. Right. So my whole thing was, I'm going to reach these kids. And then it starts to evolve into, wait, it's adults like this as well, mm, who yes. not just 
physically they, they need to work on but mentally mm -hmm. so it started to get bigger and where lighted up fitness came from at the end of the day i was like lord what what can i name this and first thing that came to mind is like be a light i was like okay let me look up some right, scripture got that. yeah so then i'm like all right be a light so how can i be a light and i was like all right do i just want to just seclude myself into some with sports i was like fitness is 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 broad now right. I can touch multiple people right. at the same time. And he got bigger than that. Then I said, hold on. It's people who've been to college, just like me, who go back into the job force and they're not happy. Mm -hmm. So if I can put on people who I went to school with, yes. give them a job, and yes. now we empower each other because yes. we entrepreneurs and we kings and we can help each other to build other people up. Yes. Why can't I not do this then? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's where like the fitness came from is uh, develop, train, and mentor. Um, all people, people of all ages, it doesn't matter if you're a kid, um, youth, adult, um, we're trying to help you anyone. you do special training camps. I, right? Yeah, I do, I do special DB training. I also have my girlfriend, she does the fitness part. So, you know, it, it's a team, it's a team atmosphere and that's what it's all about. She's a collegiate athlete. Yes, well. yes, yes. Uh, NCAA, track star. Track yeah. star. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, uh, you know, kids going to be nuts when we have them. But, you know, <laughs> that's that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> that's another show. So how can people get in touch with you? So uh, you can reach us on Instagram, uh, Light It Up Fitness. Uh, Facebook, Light It Up Fitness LLC, and our website is lightitupfitness.org. So those are the platforms you can reach us at. Awesome. Give our guests a big hand today. Wow, what's our biggest takeaway today? Family. There's nothing like family, specifically family support. Family support is important to individuals, to each and every one of us for a variety of reasons, most which are related to your personal well-being. Uh, listen, you, you never arrive at your destiny by yourself. Mm -hmm. you, never, you never get to the top of the mountain uh, by yourself. Mm -hmm. Family is important, and uh, there's a lot of benefits that come with being connected to. You may say, well, you know, I don't have a, a, a blood relatives or families or, you know, something happened tragic in my life and it's just me. Well, God places you around new family. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and and when you when you are blessed with a new family, that's not necessarily a bloodline family. Like Amen. I consider us family. Amen. You guys, are my guys, you know. Uh, and I'm so proud of you guys uh, that you know we have to understand that family improves overall well-being for each and every individual connected. Uh, and so family, I believe, bonds create that necessary. Um, personal wiring uh, that helps you endure the challenges uh, of life and it helps you uh, create uh, balance emotional, sp emotionally, spiritually and that translates into the physical and then just that closeness one of the things that studies show is that closeness when you do life with people in a healthy way believe it or not it adds to your life mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. And so if you are someone that you know or a loved one, family member, or at odds with each other, um, man, take out the time to make it right. Uh, if there's nothing that you take away from, with the exception of Kobe being this great icon, and he's going to be forever missed, the, the biggest takeaway is for me when it comes to family, Time is short. Life is a gift. But you only have so, so much time with the gift of life. And within 60 seconds, life can change. Within 60 seconds, your connection can change forever by this thing called death. And so if you need to call someone up right now, call them up. Call your mother up. Call your child up. Watch this. Put the pride aside. Put your ego aside because it's blocking you from experiencing something very beautiful with your family, with your sister, with your brother, with, with, with a friend. And so reconcile with that individual. And sometimes you just have to be the bigger one to release 
the other person from the hurt and the harm uh, and the pain that they've caused you before uh, so that you won't be the individual like these families we just saw um, whose lives were taken tragically with Kobe Bryant where their families, some of them didn't get a call. Some of them got it on a news feed. Some of them got it on social media. Some of, some of them received it in ways that was, made it a little bit more tougher than if they would have had time for someone to sit them down and prepare them for what had happened. But if they, all of them would have known that Sunday would be the last day that they'd see their loved one on Monday, and they had a chance to get things right, they would have. You got a chance to make things right within your family. Family is everything. God bless you. Thank you for joining me on this podcast to live a remarkable life. It's vital for each and every one of us to become a better you. God bless you. Until the next time, again, email me your thoughts at abetteryoupodcast.com. God bless. Good night. Thank you for tuning into A Better You Program with Anthony McFarland.